Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, traders from across the globe. Thank you, thank you for spending your time with us on a Monday. I know Mondays can be busy, but Metastock tends to bring out some of the best analysts and traders out there, and they allow us to teach you, which is a wonderful thing that they allow, and I don't mind doing that. So in today's webinar, if you'll humor me, I will illustrate the power of technical analysis, during this illustration, I will offer a couple of tips, tips and tricks that you can use, certainly this week moving forward. Please understand the analysis I'm about to show you is simplified so that you will understand it, but it's very, very powerful. I can do much, you know, I can get much more intricate and I can show you things that would confuse you, but that's not why you're here. You're here to learn something. So I will keep it simple and powerful so that you will take something away from this webinar. If you like what you're about to see with me, it's very easy to find me. I am literally in a live trading room for 20 hours a day. I'm there right now waving to you because I don't even close it when I do webinars. I am always here. Neil Dacey, in fact, is what I call an Omniac who's been out to my Omni camp, which is a four day boot camp I hold here in Las Vegas. He has been out to camp and when I'm done showing you charts, Neil is going to come up and explain to you how you can find me, how you can get to live with Oscar. The fee is absolutely nothing. There aren't even credit cards required. So make sure that you listen to Neil because he's going to show you how to find me after this presentation. And of course, we will show you how to contact us with, at dano at livewithoscar.com, which I'll put up before the presentation is over. Let's get started. Traders, you're looking at NVIDIA Daily Bar Chart. About five weeks ago, somewhere around there, I did a webinar for you, and I said, I'm going to show you something very interesting in the webinar five weeks ago. Five weeks ago, I said, I'm going to show you a bunch of AI plays that you can get into if you cannot afford an expensive NVIDIA that literally can go from 800 to 950 and back to 800 within a week. <laughs> can you afford that volatility? Can you afford that stock? Most people can't, right? Most traders can't. Fund managers, people that are hedging, people that are trading other people's money, well, they can afford $900 stocks. Not much trouble there. Can you afford them? The purpose of the, the webinar five weeks ago was to show you alternatives to NVIDIA that you could afford. And I wanted everyone to get involved in those stocks. They're ETFs, summer stocks. So I showed that presentation to you five weeks ago. We are looking at NVIDIA right now. One of the things I mentioned about NVIDIA is that Wall Street is in love with the 21 bar moving average or algorithm, as I like to call it, on NVIDIA. In fact, we just got a signal on Wednesday last week right here. Look at how well I'm gonna move this trend line or I'll at least change, the, I'll change it so that it's a little thinner. And you can see underneath that trend line. And what you'll see is that we are riding this average. See this average? We keep hitting it and Wall Street just comes in and buys the crap out of this thing. They hit it again or just about hit it Wednesday last week and it hit the bottom of the trend channel at the same time and boom, we got an NVIDIA signal. Now, so we know Wall Street loves the 21 bar algo on NVIDIA, but again, can we all afford NVIDIA? So the alternatives to NVIDIA was what I spent my last hour and well, my last webinar, the hour of the last webinar, instructing you on what you can afford if you cannot afford this. Now I'm going to go over each and every one of those that we went over in the prior webinar, and we're going to see where we are now. If you look at this little hand, there's going to be a little hand to illustrate where the last webinar was on each chart. So the last webinar was here and NVIDIA has moved up to there so far. All right, so we're going to go over the alternatives to NVIDIA, which is what I was hoping I could give you in the webinar five weeks ago. And then we're going to take it forward. We'll talk about a bunch of charts. In other words, if you are into, let's say after we do the AI part, which we're going to do now, if you're into crypto stock indices, if you're into metals, if you're into grains, if you're into Forex, there's going to be a little something in this webinar for each of you. So make sure you're paying attention. I'll show you a market that's in play right now in each one of those categories after we take a look at the AI. So we did speak about the AI revolution. Welcome to it. NVIDIA is a big part of it. Wall Street loves the 21 ball moving average. I am of Wall Street, started at 18 years old in 1982 and have been there my entire life. 
I know what they're looking at, and I will show that to you. So AI, we mentioned, all right, we might not be able to afford this. Oscar, what are the alternatives? And I went through a list of alternatives that we're going to go over now. And in those alternatives, we're probably going to take one or two and remove them from our portfolio from five weeks ago. And I'll show that to you now. So one of the first charts I showed you was the AI play in our last webinar. And I said, I love this little gem. Omni started getting involved right about here. Wall Street loves the 27-4 algorithm on this. It just hit a few days ago, and away it went. It's inside of a wonderful channel, and it's a great alternative to NVIDIA if you cannot afford NVIDIA. So this was one of the first ETFs or stocks that I showed you in the last webinar, and what I want to tell you is we still like it. It stays inside of our portfolio. So we still like AI, AIQ.O. AIQ, if you're not using Metastock, AIQ.O stays in the portfolio. The 27 bar moving average that worked five weeks ago, right here, what we did our last webinar, is still working today. Use that, but the idea is to show you a list of AI stocks instead of NVIDIA, and then show you some stuff for if you're a futures guy that you can play with. So there's your AI play called AIQ, and it's still working since five weeks ago when we showed it to you. We're loving it. Keep that in your portfolio. The next one I showed you, well, you know what, Bitcoin's here, so we'll look at it. Bitcoin's in my list because we love Bitcoin. We expect it to go to 85,000. It will absolutely get there. But why it's in this webinar is because we just started to get a signal. Look, right here. We're just starting to get a signal today, kids. I'll get back to that a little bit later. But Bitcoin, which is part of the webinar we did five weeks ago, I consider it part of the AI revolution. Bitcoin is getting a signal. Now, this is called a possible head and shoulders. See the left shoulder is a round one. Let me just make this a little bigger. See it's left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Well, the fact that it's a very small head and shoulders, and it's only a couple of weeks long, this is what's called a continuation pattern, not a topping pattern. This is continuation. A small head and shoulders is a continuation pattern, kids. It is not a topping pattern. You've got a small head and shoulders building, which is simply a consolidation pattern for higher highs. Now, if this head and shoulders was much bigger, let's say it was huge and took up the whole chart, well, that would be a different story, right? That might be a topping head and shoulders. But this one is really not. I mean, it's just a few weeks. It's really not that big. It fits inside of a month. So we are still looking to buy the dips because of that continuation pattern and the fact that this average has worked so well in Bitcoin and we are back at it again. So that's how come Bitcoin made the list, but there are others that you will love. Another AI play if you're not going to go with the biggest of the AI companies, you have alternatives. BOTZ is another one of alternatives. Right here is where we gave the signal in the last webinar. We told you if you can't afford NVIDIA, go buy this instead, or buy all of these and put them in your portfolio. Well, we were here, and now we've made it all the way up to here, bounced, and are heading back up again. So far, these have been good alternatives to NVIDIA, and I hope you guys paid attention, you guys, gals, traders out there. I hope you paid attention five weeks ago, and I hope you're paying attention to it now, because there's six or seven more that fit in this mold. So we've got bots still looking good. We liked it right here at the green hand. Uh, in the last webinar, we were right here at the green hand that I told you about this, and so far, so good. And look at how it's riding the average. Isn't that wonderful? It just rides that orange average. All the way through, it just rides the average. So you know you're getting a signal if you get near the average, but this is about getting all of them into a portfolio instead of one big stock that may move too fast. So bots is still part of the portfolio. We will keep that. Let's move along to the next one. I also showed you buzz, B-U-Z-Z dot K, back here at the little hand, the thumbs up. This is where we gave the signal, and again, it is fantastic. It's an affordable alternative to high-flying NVIDIA, and it is staying 
where we'd like it to stay inside the channel, moving higher, mostly above the average. Every now and then a spike through, but not much. Stays above the average. We know Wall Street's still liking it. We still like it. We're going to keep buzz in our portfolio as well. So these are the exact stocks that we went over five weeks ago. And I mentioned if you're if you know me well enough and you're following me, I've qualified all of these. Put them in your portfolio. Well, here we are five weeks later, and guess what? They're all doing almost all of them are doing really well. So now we're going to look at another that was in our webinar five weeks ago, and that is the IQM. Once again, right here at the hand, we liked it. Did the webinar for you. Many of you seen that last webinar. If not, you're new to this, please pay attention. These will help you. Um, we liked it about here. Well, we've been liking it since down here. This one only got fall, that's this little triangle. But the last webinar was five weeks ago, and we were right here at this hand when I offered this as one of the stocks you should put in your portfolio or ETFs. And we have rallied up since, came back at the average, and are taking off again. Another fantastic alternative, a high-flying NVIDIA. So traders, I offer, the one thing that you'll hopefully hear about from Neil, I offer an Omnicam. It is very exclusive. It is very small. It is for only two to five people. It's only three, four times a year, and it happens here in Las Vegas in my home office. I call that Omnicamp, and I invite three or four traders, and I try to fix their lives. I show them the Omni method so that they can fish for themselves. If you like me, if you like what you're seeing, if you realize this is literally my analysis 101, I am so much deeper than this, I can help you in so many ways. If you like what you're about to see, you go to omnibootcamp.com, and fill out an application. I'm hosting an Omnicamp in April and in June. Those are the only two on the books. They're for very few traders. And Neil Dacey will explain more at the end of my webinar, but you really should come out and join me because it's very exclusive. If you get fixed, you'll be fixed, I promise you. They've got to come, they've got to, come to Omnicamp to realize all the mistakes they've made in the past didn't need to be made by products that don't work. I would say the Omnicamp is incredibly valuable. You're learning how to make money in a, a business where the possibilities are, you know, absolutely amazing. And, and you're giving, you're, you're taught the tools to be able to take advantage of that. If you've been following Oscar for a while and you have the opportunity to come out to Omnicamp, do it. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, and you owe it to you having a better life to make better choices in life. I would recommend it. Um, I, I would, I, as soon as I go home, I'm gonna, you know, be like, you guys, you, you need, if you want to learn how to trade, you need to go. Anytime in the chat room, I'm gonna be like, you guys need to go. You, if you want to learn how to truly trade and trade like a pro, you need to go to Omnicamp. Anyway, the AI play, Franklin Intelligent Machines ETF has done really well. Great alternative to NVIDIA. And of course, there are others, not just NVIDIA, but that's the big name out of this. We'll leave that as the big culprit that's too expensive. And this one would work well in your portfolio. If you're looking for an AI portfolio, but did not want to spend too much money on one particular stock. But this one in your grouping as well. Then we move to another. And this one is called Loop, L-O-U-P on Metastock.K. Once again, Wall Street and these particular ETFs, oh, they just love the 27 bar algorithm. They are all over it. How do we know? Look at when I moved that trend line. The trend line and the algorithm or the average seems to be the spot that they just come in and buy. Right? You can see it every time gets to the average in the line, they come in and buy it, right? Gets back to the average in the line, they come in and buy it. Runs up again, back to the average in the line, gets through a little, they come in and buy it. So we know this is working, we know it's working well on this, and it suits us if we are looking for an AI play for the future. So these aren't short term, right? These we want you to hold. If there's something we don't want you to hold, we're gonna pull it out during our segment. So. Of everything I showed you five weeks ago, I still like every one of those, but we're going to run into one or two that we're 
we're going to remove. Learns is probably in that category. So lrnz.k, a much cheaper, one of the much cheaper alternatives to NVIDIA. I gave it to you here on this day. There's a little green hand there, right? You can see that little green hand. That's the day that we did the webinar together, and I told you I liked it. it came out of out of this dip above the channel, in, back into the channel above the average, and we liked it, right? So we showed this to you as part of the grouping. Here's what I don't like. Since then, it's been it spent a lot of time under the average. Also, if you look, I've got a green arrow, green arrow, green arrow, green arrow, green arrow. Why am I suddenly putting up red arrows? Red arrow, red arrow, red arrow. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that we're getting a lot of red arrows here. So I'm going to tell you that if LRNZ does not settle above 40 today, remove it from our portfolio. That's what the red hand, the red thumb pointing down is for. If LRNZ.K does not settle above 40 today, then I'll write that so that you don't miss it. It's got to settle above 40. If it does not settle above 40, we remove this from our AI portfolio. I only like the ones that are performing well, no sense in holding on to ones that are just barely performing. Now, it's worth more than it was when I offered it, but I don't like it. It's still around the same price. So for me, if it's not performing well, we can always get back to it. Don't need this one in our portfolio. So we would be removing L, R, and Z if you followed me five weeks ago and bought any of these. Again, too many red arrows lately. And I'm the one who puts the arrows up. It's on an automatic system. But I don't like the fact that I have them. Failed at the average. Failed at the average. Failed at the average. Well, we usually hold at the average, right? And there's a good reason to put the red thumbs down on that. So, again, if you were following me, put a note next to this one. If you cannot get above 40 on the settlement today, we'll take it off your portfolio. What else was in the AI? Ah, yes, we have the AI called, well, the AI play, as I like to call them. It's a Wisdom Tree AI fund, WTAI. This one as well, if you look right here at the hand, that symbol, this is where we liked it. Well, it's rallied up, but it hasn't really maintained, and it keeps hovering above the average. Once again, I'm going to give you a number. If you cannot settle this above 21 today, you will pull this one out of your portfolio. So if we can close above, and we can just fix that little tie box, it doesn't sit up there. If we can close above 21, then we're good to go. If we cannot close above 21, then I think the red thumbs down means let's remove it. Now, again, this is more expensive than it was when we offered it to you, but it hasn't really gone anywhere. In five weeks, I like the one to perform right away. So we'll likely pull that and the one before it out of the portfolio if it does not settle above 40, of course, and above 21 on this one. What else is waiting for us out there? Well, we've already seen that. We don't need to see that again. Ah, there's another one. Check this bad boy out. The Robo Global ATI, AI ETF. I think it's THNQ.K on Metastock. We gave this to you right here at the hand at that little symbol. And so far, it's been looking fantastic. Nice rally up, nice pull back to the average, rally back up, trying to get back into the trend channel. So we still want to keep Think Q in our portfolio of AI alternatives. So if you're following me, keep this one as well. In fact, I don't think I'm pulling any others. We have others to look at, but the two I showed you were the only two that weren't just perform, perform, perform. No sense in holding on and hoping, right? Out of the portfolio, we ride the winners and cut the non-performers. They're not losing, but they're non-performing. So let's just get rid of them. Um, who else is going to show up here? Uh, Quantum is another one doing really, really well. I, I kid you not, traders, Wall Street is watching this AI emergence. They're following the proper ETFs with the proper algorithms 
I'm following just along with them, right with them in tune. Wall Street is watching. This is the AI revolution, and it's acting very much like the computer age did back in the 80s, 90s, like the internet did back in the 2000s. It is just exploding, turning into a whole new industry. And this quantum ETF, look at the way it rides the average. I mean, it almost never violates the average. Once it's above, it stays above. And when it's below, it stays below. Great average or algorithm on a fantastic ETF so far. That's been staying in tune with the AI revolution. And of course, not so expensive that we can't afford it. And what else was in that last webinar? Let's see. Oh, we got another. No, nope, I think we've looked at the ones that I wanted to show you. Yes, we've looked at the ones I wanted to show you as far as AI is concerned. So remember, there are two questionable. We may be removing them. All the rest have done really well since we presented them to you five weeks ago. Now, that would this information is fantastic if you're holding and getting involved in AI for the future. But a lot of us are day traders. A lot of you listening in are day traders, and you kind of need to know what should be happening this week in the markets. Great, I've got all these AI plays that take some time, but what about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? What do we do about that? With that in mind, I'm going to take you to a few charts that should show you. This is last night's home. The Dow Jones Daily Bar. In fact, I did a YouTube video last night. I do one every night. And this was one of the charts I presented in my YouTube video. And in that, I said, you're looking at the Dow Jones Daily Bar. And take a look at this chart for just a moment. Look at what happens here. If you want to know what's happening right now in the markets, you've got the market goes from the low to the high, right? Hits the top. Hits the bottom. Rallies back up, hits the top of the channel, comes back down, hits the bottom of the channel, jigger jags around a little bit, back to the top of the channel. What should come next? Anybody listening, what do you think comes next? Simple one on one analysis, right? It doesn't get simpler than that, but very powerful. I promise you that the markets are all about geometry. I showed this to you in another um, webinar a few weeks back. I spent an hour teaching you geometry. Wall Street loves geometry, and they always come back to it. So geometry is basically where trend lines are drawn and how they meet. So if you've got a trend line, you've got geometry around this trend line. Well, Wall Street follows this geometry. They, they program it, okay? I got you. They program it into computers, and they call them algorithms. But it's the geometry in the market. It's the averages. It's all the stuff that we're looking at just being programmed in. With a good pair of eyes, you don't need to have an algorithm, you don't need Wall Street, the stuff is easy to figure out where it should go next. All right, so you've got the Dow Jones and you see the pattern, right? I mean, it is a simple pattern. It goes from the bottom of the channel to the top, then makes its way to the bottom, right? We did this already, but just to reiterate, make it simple from the bottom up to the top, channel begins. Then we come racing down to the bottom, channel holds races up to the top. It's top channel holds again. It stops it from going up. Races down. Hits the bottom. Starts hitting the bottom a few times. And what's it do? Races back up. So what should it do next, kids? Isn't that kind of simple? It should come lower. Now, we've got something else going on. There's an Oscarism. If you know me, if you've been following me for the last 40 years, people on the internet for the last 15 or 20 or 15, 16 years, the Dow Jones Daily Bar is doing something we call an Oscarism known as the holiday reversal. So what is a holiday reversal? Well, you've had the markets gangbusters moving up this week leading into the Easter week. This is Easter this week. At the end of this weekend, we have a three-day weekend. Market will be closed either Monday or Friday. That makes it a three-day weekend, right? So you close Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or you close Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's a three-day weekend. Anytime we're leading into a major holiday three-day weekend, some kind of reversal takes place during that week. And it was absolutely picture-perfect, started exactly when it should have. So I think we're in a small holiday reversal. We have a red omni 
and it should bring us down here somewhere. That's why we have a question mark. And when that holiday reversal is over, it'll head right back up again is most likely what happens because we've got a repetitive pattern here. So I wanted to show you that. This chart tells me that we ex expect a slight pullback, but understand this chart was prepared and used in a video last night, Sunday night, to show us Monday was supposed to have this pullback, and we are getting the pullback. This is what happened on Monday so far. So I had this video out last night with this very chart, video number 2726, and I depicted exactly what I just showed you and said, we're looking for the downside based on the omni arrow pointing down and everything else I just showed you. So this week, we expect at least another day or two of downside in S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, the gamut of U.S. indices. Then there's this chart. Um, you know what? Let's start with this. Let's go here first. We did the Dow. Now let's go look at the transportation average. And what do you have with the transportation average? Basically the same thing. You have a race up to just about the high of the channel. Race is back down. It's the low. Race is back up. High of the channel. Race is back down. Almost makes a low. Hangs around for a while and finally puts the low in. Runs back to the top of the channel. That is what we expect next. Right? Much like the DJI, this indicates a pullback for this week. Now, I don't know that it'll go down four days in a row this week. So it's the end of the week. It'll turn around and head back up. But you got a couple of down days coming based on what we're seeing here. Now, Omni is a day trader. And the Omni signal can flip from day to day. Monday's a buyer, Tuesday's a seller, Wednesday could be a buyer again. So we'll see what the average, we'll see what the Omni says at the end of the day. But the transportation average right now is pointing towards the downside, much like Dow Jones Industrial Average. And if you ask me, I think this is a flagpole. Watch this. I think this is a flagpole. And I think this whole piece right here is a pennant flag. Here's your pole. Here's your flag. I think the whole thing is a pennant flag. You race back down to the bottom. Eventually, you break out through the top. If you remove this, you've got yourself a pennant flag here. And that's what it is. But it also has major resistance from the top, so we'll use it. So overall, in the end, higher it should go. We're expecting lower this week. So if you're into U.S. indices, that's something that I hope will help you this week in U.S. indices. Are you a metals trader? Let's see what chart. Are there any metals traders out there? Let's go with K. Look at Dr. Copper. Now, copper, major resistance line, hits it, drops, gets near it, drops, hits it, and starts the major drop, right? What else is happening there? I think this is a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. Now, unlike the one I showed you in Bitcoin, which only lasted you know, 10 days, this one goes from the middle of February all the way until we expect it to fill out in April and May. So if the right shoulder fills in, what you've got in copper is a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. I don't know that copper belongs up here to begin with because it's not usually where copper is. Copper's usually cheaper. So. Copper looks like a seller of rallies as long as we stay below 406. You keep copper below 406, you can sell the rallies expecting that this will fill in at some point and create the right shoulder. And once you get the right shoulder, the bar is in here, then you've got your head and shoulder formation, and we can do a calculation on how low it could go. So this is what we're expecting, but it is a question mark because nobody knows this will happen for sure. But because it's a rather larger head and shoulders, we would expect that if it does fill in, <coughs> copper will work its way lower. So keep your eyes on copper if you're a metals trader. If you're a gold trader, it was a short-term capitulation that took place. Look, we had something called a double top. Top one drops down. Top two drops down into a flag gets to the top of the flag formation and projection, right? The flag projected about there, hit there in one day dump, and we called it on that day short-term capitulation. Now, gold has come down. It's trying to hang around here. These are short-term stalling patterns when you see this in gold. 
It means it will capitulate for a while, maybe a week or two, but that will be the high for a while. How do we know? Look right here. I could show you this 10 times on gold chart. See, after capitulated, short-term capitulation went down for a while before it finally started to gain legs. You've got a short-term capitulation that took place already. So you should end up dropping a little bit. Now, <clears throat> a lot of that will depend on other indices and currencies and such, <clears throat> but you're looking at what was a short-term capitulation in gold, and we took advantage of it while we could. We are now on the sidelines in gold, waiting to see what the next signal will be. But you did have your short-term capitulation, and that does usually lead into a week or two of downward movement. We'll play this one day at a time. I'll show you another chart during the segment that will explain why gold should move either up or down. We'll get there. So what else are we looking at? I showed you copper. I showed you gold. So I showed you some metals and I showed you a grain. If you are into foreign currencies, let's look at this. Uh, in fact, let's go to another chart for that. I think I have this pre-drawn up on a prettier chart for you. So let's go here. Yes. Euro currency was doing really well when it was inside this channel, green channel, and started to get above the average and started to look really good. But since then, we've broken down through the bottom of the channel, and we are now below the average. And now look at how well this average keeps Euro 6E in check. It's U-R-O-M-2-4 in Metastock. It's the 6E if you're not in Metastock. Look, holds, rallies, holds, rallies, holds, rallies. Finally gets through, can't get above, can't get above. Does get above, gets back below. So the test above didn't work, we're back below, and now instead of being in this green upwards channel, we're in that red downwards channel. So for now, we are sellers of rallies if we had to do anything in euro currency. And the reason why you would want to sell rallies in euro currency is if you keep your eye on this one. Keep, you know what, maybe it's called the, let me see if I could give you a better one. Maybe it's the DXY. I have a prettier chart I'd like to show you if it'll show up. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at the dollar. Now the dollar, we've used this chart for a long time. When it was in the downward swing on this side of the chart, we said, okay, I'm gonna teach about flags. They usually quick drops to a consolidation, to another quick drop, to a consolidation, to another quick drop. All right, so we were doing flags back in the day when that mattered, right? So I'll just make it a little dark as you can see what we're looking at. There was a time that we were using this chart for the downside, and we were using these flags to help us project just where we go. All right, and it did work. Quick consult, right? So you have a drop, consolidation, drop, consolidation, drop. So that's usually how a flag works, but that was on this side of the chart. Now, we're on this side of the chart. Things are going differently now. We're starting to move higher. We're above the average, which is holding well, and above this, that's what gets important, right? You got above that. So it's a major, major apex, and you were able to get the dollar above it. If the dollar stays above this, euro continues to drop. Okay? Keep your eyes on that dollar. If you are a euro trader, that is your signal for whether or not you want to be long or short the euro. That dollar moves higher, gold should go lower, euro should go lower, grains should go lower if the dollar continues to break out through that spot it just broke out. Then we've got something interesting. This guy. Ethereum, if you're into crypto, here's a signal. Two days, three days ago, I did a video and said there is a signal coming in Ethereum. Get ready for it. I did it on YouTube. Well, we got our signal. Boom. And look, it's starting to go. Hit the signal up, back above this channel. And let me show you why that's significant. Check this out. This channel has kept us in check from here, right? Down, trend line stops us. Down, trend line stops us. Down, trend line stops us. Down, gets above. Ooh, beautiful. What happens? We come down, we test the trend line for one or two bars, right back above it. After hitting the average, we have a signal. So Ethereum is showing that it wants to move higher. Now, if Ethereum is showing it wants to move higher, 
guess which other one is going to move higher. Bitcoin, 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 and bingo, the signal is in, kids. That happened today. We have Bitcoin signal today. I mentioned in the video just three days ago, we were also waiting for the Bitcoin signal to come in. Well, we have it. So what normally happens on Bitcoin is, as you can see, this is a wonderful, wonderful average Wall Street is using. Wall Street is very involved in Bitcoin now, and I know they're using this average, so pay attention to it. So it makes a bull flag. At the end of the bull flag, it hits the average, and we get a buy signal, runs up, another bull flag, which is what? Quick run up, consolidation, right? Bull flag, bear flag, same. Quick run up, consolidation, quick run up, consolidation. So bull and bear flags are the same. But it hits the average and explodes. Puts in a pennant flag, explodes out of the pennant flag, comes down and hits the average and explodes. Then what's this? Comes out of the average, it gets under the average. Well, that's different. What's this? So right at that point, I started to say, okay, traders, maybe a little pullback is coming. We'll wait for the next signal. There it is. We came down, spent a little time, signal is in. So now you can buy the dips in Bitcoin. And you know we've got an 85,000 projection in Bitcoin. It may get there sooner than we had planned, but that is the projection. We've had this on our board in each one of our YouTube videos for a good two and a half years now. It will be there soon, I promise you. So that is Bitcoin, another signal. Then we've got something like this. There's a lot of talk about the markets and people are uncertain whether the markets are going to go up or going to go down. Is the stock market, what's it going to do? Oh my God. And let me show you something. There is no way this market is coming down right now. This is chart masterpiece. We've been using this for several years, this very same chart. It helped me call the buy. In COVID, I mean, it helped me do all kinds of great stuff. This chart, the NASDAQ weekly bar, is telling us we still have a long way to go on the upside. Why? I'm going to take you through this chart so you can see it for yourself. We're going to go back a long time on this chart, if it even has the data for you to go back that far. Let's see. How far back can we get? Good. We're at 2005. Let's move a little forward past that. Good. Right here. Check this out. 2008, 2009, the big crash of 2008-9. You might notice that the NASDAQ weekly bar does not get under the 200 bar moving average at all. But the crash of 2008-9 did it. Down we went, came back out in 2009. Boom, just like that. Underneath in 08, back out in 09. Now here's what's interesting. What happened after that? The market got above the 200 bar moving average. Massive rally. Of rally. So it gets above the average. This is a weekly bar, kids. It got above the average at 1782 and it went to 1901. 2000 point rally in the, in the Dow, excuse me, in the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ hits 200 ball moving average on a weekly, runs up, hits it on a weekly, runs up, hits it on a weekly, runs up, hits it, runs up, hits it, extended rally begins. Okay. So now watch, extended rally, it just continues. It hit the 200 and an extended rally ensues, watch. Finally, starts to come back, almost gets to the 200 ball moving average. Another extended rally ensues. These aren't little rallies, these are long extended rallies. Comes back down, NASDAQ weekly almost gets to the average again. An extended rally takes place, then COVID hits. We hit the average during COVID, and what happens? Massive, massive rally, hits the average again last year, and now we're in a massive rally. Kids, the rallies I just showed you, the one that we're in now is pale compared to the ones that we've seen since hitting the 200 ball moving average on the NASDAQ. So I am here to tell you that the NASDAQ is telling us, look what it just did right here. We just had a down spur a few days ago, right? And on that down spur, all it did was go right there, right to the trend. Right back up we go. This is Chart Masterpiece. This chart tells you everything you need to know. US indices are not going lower this year unless something happens to that chart. Then there's one other chart I'd like to show you. And let's see, where is that? That is Becom. That should be in here somewhere. 
Let me show you something interesting. The stock market is going to continue to go up. So we've got a lot of talk about inflation, right? Inflation, inflation, inflation. When you go to the store, you see inflation. If you don't shop yourself, your wife or husband comes home and tells you about the inflation. It's in products all over the stores. But I am here to tell you this. The reason why companies are going up is because they're not experiencing inflation. They make products from raw materials, right? Raw materials. During COVID, when we had a backlog, you could not get raw materials. We had hyperinflation. Inflation gauge, this is the measurement of inflation. I call it the measurement of deflation these days. It was at 140.55 during COVID. You couldn't get supplies, the prices of products went up. Well, we have dropped from 145 to 98.70. It's not even 98.78 anymore, it's 98.70. That's how far inflation has come down. This is commodity inflation. These are the products that companies use, they buy these raw materials to make a product to sell to you. That product cost them a fortune to make two years ago. It does not cost them a fortune to make anymore. Look at how far down we've come in inflation, but they're keeping the prices higher. That's giving us consumer inflation. What I am telling you right now, the product, the raw materials that these companies are using to make these products that they've never lowered the prices on us since COVID, they're bullshitting us in plain English. They are getting their supplies much cheaper than they were getting them two, three years ago or even last year, but they're not lowering our price at the, either at the pump or at the store. However, those companies are still enjoying the cheaper price of raw materials and the high price of the inflated products on the shelves. They are going to continue to make money. This market will continue to go up. Do you get that, everybody? That is what I was hoping to show you. I hope this helped you with the AI stocks and ETFs that we looked at five weeks ago. I hope you were paying attention and you bought some of them. And I hope what I just showed you here will help you for the rest of the week. Now, if you would like to find me, I am very easy to find. Like I mentioned, I'm sitting in a live trading room right now. As I'm typing and speaking to you guys, Neil Dacey is someone who's come out to my training camps. I host the training camp here. Usually happens Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday, Friday, what's well, actually Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. People show up in town on Thursday, they leave by Monday. One of my, my recent, about a year or so ago, attendees was Neil Dacey. Neil Dacey is going to present for us, and he's going to tell you where you can find me, what happened at OmniCamp, and how the Omni actually works. So I'm going to yield some time to Neil now, and Neil will show you where you can find me and what the Omni is all about. And then if time allots for it later on, if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to help you out with questions as well. Neil, are you there, buddy? Are you ready to present? So I'll show you for now. While we're waiting for Neil, I'll show you a trade that we took today, which actually didn't work. Losing day four. So this is soybeans. I'm surprised it's not a label chart. This is soybeans. And soybeans looked to us like it was going to come off today. And we ended up getting short. Let me show you. We ended up getting short today in soybeans right around here. And it didn't work. We got out at the end of the day here. So not a big deal, but we were sellers of rallies today in soybeans, and it did not come down. Is what it is. Just figured I'd share that with you while we were sitting here doing nothing. Because um, not every one of our trades wins. Wait, wait, wait. I know wait. he's over there right now. I've got to take you to another chart. I forgot to show this to you. How cool okay. is it? In our last webinar, well, actually, the one before this, the last webinar was about AI. The one before it was about geometry. And I showed you some really great moves in geometry. We were down here, and I told you based on the geometry, Chipotle goes to 3,000. Go back and look at the webinar. It's got this very chart with this note in it. That was here at 1402. It broke 3,000 yesterday. Kids. <laughs> How about that for a call? Insanity, right? Well, that is a testament to the power of technical analysis. How on earth would I know Chipotle is going to 3,000? And when it would get there? I don't have a crystal book. I do have a crystal ball, but I don't use it for trading. So, the analysis told me, and I told you this when we were down here, I don't know, six months ago. I said, you watch what happens to Chipotle. 
the geometry tells us it goes to 3,000. That yellow line right there is 3,000. It just took it out. Next target, by the way, 3,150 if you are a Chipotle logo. Just thought I'd share that with you because it was actually in my plans to show you today. I just forgot to uh, show it to you. That's pretty good. I mean, that was the testament of technical analysis. What else is there? Is there other cool stuff we can show while we wait to you? There's always cool chance. There's always something cool out there. Um, so we could, you know, we should probably look at bonds just because they're giving us they have so much to do with what the Fed does next. Let's go take a look at bonds. Let's see if I can just pull up an old bond chart if not for T bonds. Are we in here somewhere? Yes, we are. All right, so for T bonds, you know, the Fed between the PCE and bonds gives them a big, big heads up on what they're going to do next, right? Bonds are very, very important. So, what we're looking at right now and why this average is here, I don't know. Let's see what it is. I don't even know what the average is. So, 100 ball moving average. I don't even know why that's on the chart. It must be from something else. Um, let's just see what average looks better than me. Wait a minute. Let's go back to the 50 because Wall Street seems to like the 50. Let's see what the 50 does. All right. The 50 is more involved. You can see Wall Street's probably hovering around that 50 more so than other stuff. So what we're getting in bonds is a consolidation, if you will, in this direction, right? Sort of in this direction, it's sort of coming down. Now, bonds going down is interest rates, believe it or not, moving up. So when bonds go in this direction, slowly interest rates are rising. When bonds go in this direction, interest rates are dropping. So this is almost flat, if you want to know the truth. What's happening here is kind of good. It's almost flat. You know what I mean? You could draw a horizontal line at the top and bottom of this, and it's really not going anywhere lately. It's just been stuck in this area. So let's get rid of this for a moment. Bonds have really been stuck in here. Sort of flat, right, in between this line and that one. And if we can keep bonds that way, the stock market will just continue to rally. You can keep bonds somewhere in here or higher. Higher is always better. Bond futures. But as long as they stay in here, they're basically sideways right now. Sideways interest rates helps the market move higher. Um, looking at fundamentals instead of technicals, a usually a presidential election year, by the way, it's a bullish year. You go back and look at the last 50 elections, you're going to find 47 of the last years leading up to that election are bullish. 47, whatever, 48, whatever number we're at presidents now. So if you go back and look, the odds are good that you had a pretty decent year leading into an election year. And we've got that happening now, and bonds are stable. So I'm assuming that we're going to have a decent year this year, as long as nothing insane comes out, pops up without us knowing about it. So basically what Neil was going to do is make my life easier and show you how to join me in my live trading room. And the way to do that would be to go to live with Oscar. So I'll pull it up for you. If you go to livewithoscar.com, this is really simple. If you already have the password, you log in. If you don't have one, hit the register button. There is almost nothing to fill out. There are no credit cards required at all. You will Ask for a code, it will go to spam. Your email will go to spam. There's no way to stop that. Go to your spam, click on the email, and you can immediately join me in my live trading room. And you can hang out with me at livewithoscar.com. Also at Live with Oscar, we offer trading recommendations. And Neil was going to go over a few of them with you as well. I send out trading recommendations 24 hours a day, literally, except for Sunday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sometimes we'll go out on Sunday night. Where the Omni wants to get in and out of the market, we send you a flash update through Discord, through email, a text goes out, all kinds of ways. And I say it in my trading room. So we make sure that everybody gets the signals. But better than getting the signals is learning how to qualify and quantify a market, to know what Wall Street knows before they know it. If you want to learn that, you'll have to come to omnibootcamp.com. 
I don't know that I have one up right now, but if I have one, I'll show it to you. Yes, I do. Omnibootcamp.com. If you go there, you will just simply click get started. You can fill out a small application. It takes no time at all. You can set up a time to speak with me on the telephone. That happens at omnibootcamp.com. But if you want to come out to my Omni Camp, which is that four day training session, one of them is at the end of April, the other one is in June. Please contact me, let me know. Easiest way to contact me is at livewithoscar.com or I mean, just simply call when we don't buy it here. You can just give me a call and I'll discuss OmniCamp with you at that number and see if you qualify. So I'm doing one in Florida and one in Vegas. The one in Vegas is April, the one in Florida is June. If you wanna join me on either of those two, Go to omnibootcamp.com or just dial 702-629-4755 and we'll discuss the details. Jeff, with that, I thank you so much for your time. I thank you for letting me present. Neil, it's a shame you didn't get a chance to show them your wares because Neil's very good at what he does. He's a great presenter, but I did yeah, show we've you. Had him, we've had him do it before. He does a great job. <laughs> I'm really sorry we couldn't get him rolling. So, so that's about it for time. me, sir. All right, thank you, uh, Oscar. Really, really appreciate that. Oscar's phone number again, 702-629-4755 or www.livewithoscar.com or live with Oscar, whichever one. They're both applicable, right, Oscar? They're both applicable, no doubt. <laughs> All right, great job as always. Appreciate you. And if you like that, um, I've been kind of talking a little bit about this all day. Let me go ahead and make myself the presenter. I'll show my screen. Go ahead and do this, okay, and this, okay, we should be golden. All right, I've been kind of talking about the, the training class that we've, we've been including with the summit deal from Oscar um, as part of the summit deal. You'll get a master class. We sat down for uh, a training session on technical trend lines and technical formations. He talks about in his class, three hours, how to do trend lines, how to find support and resistance levels on charts, how to look at different technical formations and which ones to look for. Three hours of training, basically all available as part of the summit. And um, it's normally $4.99. Here at the summit, you can get it for $3.49. You can do that by giving us a call, 800-882-3040. Uh, you can give us a, you can go to metastock.com slash sales chat. 